one common question I get around that is, should I do a refinance on a 30-year fixed rate loan or should I uh, just put a HELOC in place? HELOC is a home equity line of credit. And the answer is, you know, it really depends. Uh, it depends what your existing interest rate. If you've got a really low, good interest rate on your primary residence, it might make sense to just keep that in place and do the line of credit. But, you know, if you can get about the same interest rate that you already have, and then you can lock in a new 30-year fixed rate loan, that's probably the route to go today because the rates are still pretty low. And the home equity line of credit usually is a 10-year loan and then, you know, it can adjust and you don't have that 30 years locked in. So if you can refinance your entire loan and improve your position, then I think that's the way to go. What are your thoughts on that, Jason? Yeah, well, I agree. If you can reduce your risk by having a little more leverage, which doesn't make you a target for a creditor, for a uh, foreclosure, if things really go down the tubes again, like they did during the Great Recession, that higher loan balance actually offers protection. And I've talked about it many times over the last 15 years. I know it's counterintuitive if you're a new listener, you're probably not going to get it, <laughs> but, you know, listen to the old shows. It's It's been talked about many times. Just go to jasonhartman.com and search. The best insurance is a high loan balance, okay? If you search that, <laughs> you'll find uh, our episodes on that where we have taken a very detailed look into that, and that's a good plan. And Sarah, you, you also alluded to, although you didn't mention it specifically, the uh, Portfolio makeovers where you're helping clients do 1031 tax deferred exchanges. A great vehicle. Income property is the most tax favored asset class in America, and taxes are the single largest expense in anybody's lives. I have done many, many 1031 exchanges myself. I'm in one now, but there may actually be a couple of options that are better. Yes, I really said that better than a 1031 tax deferred exchange. I have been geeking out, taking a deep, deep, I mean, anybody who knows me knows that I have a little bit of OCD, okay? <laughs> I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive. When I get intrigued by something, man, I just chase that to the end of the earth. <laughs> and, and this is one of the things I've been doing. I've spent hours and hours reading, learning, watching videos, consulting with people, financial advisors, lawyers, law firms, exchange accommodators. But it is a way that you can potentially relinquish properties, sell properties or a business, and it's not the opportunity zone. I want to just say that. I think the opportunity zone, as you've heard me on past episodes, is totally overhyped. I think it's overrated. You know, there's a few small number of people that it fits and makes sense for. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's completely invalid. I just think it's completely overhyped is all. There's all these promoters out there making tons of money. Essentially, it's a bait and switch in a lot of ways. For m most people, it's just no big deal. Okay. Well, I remember Jason years ago, there was the go zone. Now the go zone I, was a great deal. That was well, phenomenal. It, it yeah. was a great deal. However, yeah. I purchased a property that was initially in the go zone and then they redesignated I the yeah. lines and I lost that yeah. deduction. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can well, research anything that you're doing uh, and you make sure you know about it. There's another, there was another flaw with the go zone besides that one. Okay. And by the way, just so you know, even though they redrew some of the lines or there were misunderstandings and misinterpretations about them, a lot of people still took that deduction and got away with it. Okay. So I'll just put that out there. But here was the thing that happened with the go zone. Now this was years ago. And again, past episodes are up there of the podcast. You can find them at jasonhartman.com. Just use the search engine there to search go zone. But here was really the problem with the go zone is that tax incentives like that. And it's happening with the opportunity zone too. They distort markets. They really cause a lot of distortion. And almost immediately after the go zone tax incentive began, the money just rushed into these certain markets yes. and the properties became overvalued so quickly. We recommended it 
at the beginning and it was a great deal. I bought a whole bunch of those GoZone properties myself. I just loved the tax benefit. It was phenomenal. But after a while, all these promoters were still out there promoting this stuff. And I'm like looking at these deals saying it's crap. These deals are just not good. You know, when these opportunities come up, you really do have to just keep in mind the deal has to make sense without the opportunity. Exactly. Without the tax benefit. Without the tax benefit. Right. Right. Don't let the tail wag the dog. The deal yes. must make economic sense by itself without any special model lease back or subsidized rental income or tax benefit or anything. It needs to just make sense by itself. 